why do we care about the background noise simulation? Uh, you have to test, if, if you have a noise suppressor or noise cancelling uh, function in the device, you have to be able to test that uh, in a proper way. And if you're using too simple background noise simulation technique, then you are not going to get a reliable picture of the performance of the device. So still, the most common way of testing the uh, 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 noise reduction or, or noise cancellation is by using the 202-396, so the diffuse field uh, uh, simulation. That one is still the most common way of testing uh, uh, today. But these new simulation methods, uh, 103, 224, and then the P1100 Annex F, are intended for more sophisticated noise suppression systems. So if you have a multi-microphone system, uh, uh, that, is, that is one reason. You also have to consider super wideband, because in super wideband, the wavelength of the sound of course, it's a smaller one. You need more accurate equalization. So that is also one, uh, one aspect that comes into it, that now with super wideband transmission, you need to make sure that the equalization is correct uh, uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, over a larger area. And one big uh, uh, impact from the newer background noise simulation methods is repeatability between laboratories. Because in the older system, typically you always have to do a bit of equalization by hand. There is always a certain amount of uh, uh, freedom how you do the equalization. That two labs, they might have the same kind of flat frequency response, but the filters that they have applied might look different. And this might then uh, provide differences in the, uh, uh, in the test results. But with the newer, uh, newer background noise methods, the equalization is completely automatic. So this human factor is removed. So you get higher repeatability between the labs. So I said, I was going to say, 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 그 녹음이 얼마나 어, 실제적으로 재현되는지 해체를 치우고 제가 앉은 다음에 <웃음> 들어봤습니다. 어, 그 위치 이동을 느낄 수 있게끔 실제적으로 더 그전에 스피커 4개 쓴 것보다 더 실제적으로 이제 재현할 수 있는 그런 장점이 있었습니다. 네. So, so far I have been talking about the background noise, but the acoustic environment does also have one more aspect that is not covered by the just simulating the background noise, and that is the reverberation. So especially if we are talking about conferencing type uh, uh, devices, so if you have a conference telephone or one of these smart speakers at home, you might not necessarily have that loud background noise, but the reverberation situation might be very challenging uh, 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 for the microphones of the device. Uh, but when you are doing the testing, you are typically doing the testing in your an anechoic or semi-anechoic chamber, which means there is very little, if any, reverberation happening there. You could, of course, take some room which has more reverberation and do the tests there. But still, it would be just one room with one reverberation characteristic. So this means that when we are, uh, so uh, when we start testing uh, uh, devices like conferencing telephones or smart speakers, what we need to add to the background noise simulation is reverberation simulation, and that's what I'm going to speak uh, next. 네 이번에 이거 얼마 안 됐거든요. 한두달 정도 됐는데 이제 실제 환경적으로 복도라든가 그런 울림 현상을 이제 재현하기 위해서 이제 
이런 기능을 또 추가해서 만들었습니다. 실제 환경처럼 복도 울리는 그 환경을 이제 목소리로 재현하는 거죠. Uh, so uh, these are just a couple of examples. Uh, what we did is we recorded the impulse responses in different kinds of rooms. So you can see a uh, meeting room with additional dampening panels, approximately uh, 120 cubic meters, office room 54 cubic meters, uh, uh, up to a, this was actually, uh, this is uh, uh, in our company the where the uh, mechanical work is done. So this is a bigger, uh, bigger garage where we prepare cars to be tested. So that, uh, in that sense, uh, 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 mechanical te uh, technicians at work there, so this large workshop with a thousand cubic meters, of course, it has a very, uh, very high reverberation. So what we did is we recorded the impulse responses of these various rooms and then we set the task for ourselves. How can we reproduce these different kinds of rooms in our test lab? And that's uh, 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 what I'm then uh, now going to show you, that what are the results, how good is the uh, simulation, and in, uh, in a bit more detail, how does the simulation work? So these were our starting premises. So we recorded impulse responses in six very different rooms. And our task was, how do we simulate these rooms in our test lab, which is a very low reverberation time? Yeah, the 근데 실제적인 그 녹음된 환경을 그대로 재현할 수 있는 이런 어, 소프트웨어를 만들고 또이 측정 장비를 어떻게 할수 있는지 저도 이게 새로 출시된 거라 자산 정보를 알고 있지는 못하지만 네 그런 네, 조건을 만들어 주셨습니다. And for each room, we wanted to consider two cases. One where the talker is very close. To the device. So you can see, well, I don't know if you can see in the picture, but we have this eight microphone array here on the table. So th the idea is that this is the position where the device under test will be located. So it could be like a conferencing telephone. And in a room, uh, uh, one position is that the conferencing telephone is located just next to the speaker. This, uh, or let's call it talker. It's better to call talker. That's a speaker. I'm a talker. <laughs> uh, so uh, this situation, we of course have a, we have a high direct energy because the uh, device under test is close to the talker. So there's a quite a lot of energy from the mouth, and the reverberation is then correspondingly lower if you consider the uh, ratio between direct energy and echo, reverberation. But we also wanted to test the other case, which means the talker is located further away from the, uh, uh, from the device. So this would be a situation where you have the reverberation energy is much higher uh, when compared to the talker direct speech energy. So we had six rooms but, uh, and two uh, uh, situations, so uh, close to the device and further away from the device. 네, 해츠, 저 마우스가 말하는 다이렉트 음하고 이제 반향, 어, 잔향되는 음, 그 에너지를 시뮬레이션하기 위해서 저렇게 녹음을 한다는 얘기고요. 네, 이거는 한번 더 공부해서 아, 아, 말씀드리겠습니다. Then, uh, simply showing you the results, uh, uh, is uh, the blue one is the measured uh, parameter. So we were looking three main parameters. First of all, reverberation time, so RT60. Then we were looking the clarity, C50. And then we were looking the direct to reverberant energy ratio. So this is the, uh, what I was just talking, so this is the what amount of energy is included in the direct path and how much energy is coming from the reverberation. 
So in all of these uh, uh, graphs, the blue one is the actual, so the real result, and the red one is the simulation. And as you can see, so we have the six rooms, and then we have the position one, which means close to the device, and the alternative position, which means further away uh, from the device. So all in all, reverberation, clarity, and direct to reverberant energy ratio, as you can see, they are very well reproduced. One thing to remind here is that uh, I had, uh, uh, we have had a couple of times the question that, okay, if my test room has a uh, reverberation time of 200 milliseconds, can I simulate a room of 50 milliseconds? Answer is no. We can't beat the physics. So with this simulation, what you can do is the simulated room has to have a higher reverberation time than the test room. So you can't shorten the reverberation time of your test room with this, uh, uh, this simulation. Maybe it would be possible if, it were, uh, if you would, were using more speakers and if the uh, uh, equalization was done in a different way. Uh, but we, do, uh, we decided to do that at least in the first step we can't make the room better than what it is. So every room what you are simulating has to have a longer reverberation time than the test room where you're doing the simulation. 네, 측정치하고 저게 결과하고 같이 보여드렸고요. 네, 이 부분은 네, 넘어가도록 하겠습니다. <웃음> 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 Uh, so how do we do this is that, uh, as I said, we recorded the impulse responses. So again, the mouth was talking, and we had this eight microphone array uh, 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 with which we recorded uh, uh, the impulse response. Then what we do is we split the impulse responses into two parts. We take the direct path. This is basically a bit of manual work because you can recognize, when you have the impulse response, you can recognize simply based on the time, you know how long it takes from the mouth to the microphone array. We know the distance, so we know which part of the um, impulse response is the direct path. So we cut the direct path, that's one part, and then we have the reverberation part, uh, uh, which is then used for the, uh, for the speakers. So, uh, we record from mouth to each of the eight speakers, so we have in end, we have eight uh, uh, impulse responses, and from these impulse responses, what we do is we cut them to, uh, to extract the direct path and then the reverberation path. Yeah. 해체해서 말한 거하고 이제 반사되는 그 에너지를 같이 고려해 가지고 주변 노이즈에 같이 어 저렇게 나올 수 있게끔 이런 소프트웨어를 만들었다고 합니다. 네. Uh, we currently have uh, something like a dozen different uh, uh, scenarios. So we are currently expanding and, and uh, when this is going to be standardized, uh, uh, we also want to include more, uh, more reverberation scenarios there. So we have a, at the moment something like 10, 12 different scenarios, uh, uh, but we are constantly uh, increasing it so that we can provide a bigger database. You, you could also record your own uh, 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 impulse responses, yes, yes. So uh, you could generate your own reverberation scenario, that's also possible. So how does the setup then look like? Well, what we do is uh, uh, the, uh, when we have the signal from our test system, we split it into two, so it goes into the 
mouth. So the mouth will be talking as it would be doing in a normal test case. But then additionally, we use the eight speakers to generate the reverberation of, a, 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 of, of different rooms. So uh, in this case, it really makes sense that if you have a low reverberation room, it's easier to do the simulation, uh, simulation there. But we are, uh, uh, in that sense, we are doing the simulation that the mouth is talking and at the same time, we have the reverberation coming from the eight speakers. Head 장비는 기본적으로 이제 어, 사용할 수가 있고요. 저기 여덟 개 스피커를 통해서 이제 주변 노이즈를 이제 플레이할 때 같이 잔향까지 고려해서 이제 플레이를 하게 되고요. 실제 규혁은 아니기 때문에 어, 어떤 환경에든지 헤드 장비를 이용해서 직접 녹음하셔가지고 이제 사용하시면 됩니다. Uh, 그 오늘 사실 소개되지는 않은데 나중에 이제 통합 품질 측정하려면 어 샌딩 단, 리시브 단, 그 다음에 에코, 그 다음에 사이드 톤뭐 이런 것들 다 측정해야 되지 않습니까? 그렇죠? 특히 이제 에코 어 어쿠스틱 에코 캔슬러 이렇게 동작할 때어 제일 어려운 부분들이 이제 잔향이 이렇게 심한 공간에서 에코 캔슬러가 제대로 다 동작이 안 되고 그 다음에 스피치 퀄러티가 막 저하되고 하는 이런 것들이 많이 발생되지 않습니까? 이제 그런 거 이제 하기 위해서 이제 내가 그 실제 폰 회사에 가서 어떻게 테스트 하느냐 물어보니까 두 사람이 복도에 가서 계단 같은 거 보면 잔향이 굉장히 심한 공간에서 이제 거기 가서 딱 전해 보면 에코 캔슬러 성능을 그대로 다알수 있거든요. 이제 이제 그건 이제 뭐그 상황에 따라서 계속 바뀌는 거니까. 그뭐 그래서 지금 이런 어떤 어 그런 에코 캔슬러에 대한 성능, 더블 톡에 대한 성능을 측정하기 위해서 그걸 갖다가 정확하게 모사해 줄수 있는 어떤 이런 리버브레이션 장비를 어 8개 스피커로 하기 때문에 8개 스피커, 8개 채널에 마이크로폰을 하기 때문에 어떤 방향성도 잴수 있을 거고요. 어 그래서 어떻게 보면 좀 정량화 시킬 수 있는 부분들이 이런 장비인 것 같습니다. 요 최근에 만들어 가지고 그러면 이제 그뭐 복도에서 젠다라든지 뭐 아주 잔향이 심한 뭐 지하 공간에서 젠다라든지 그 다음에 뭐 차고 이런 데서 제일 필요가 없는 거죠. 요걸 갖다가 이렇게 그 데이터베이스 갖고 와서 시뮬레이션 해보면 어뭐 바로 그 성능을 바로 확인할 수 있으니까요. 그런 용도로 얘가 만들어진 것 같습니다. I think that you can get a bit better picture what is happening here uh, from the examples. So first of all, please consider the setup. So uh, what I have here as examples is mouth is talking. Uh, so uh, and we have basically a second head and torso simulator, which is in front. So we have two dummy heads. One of them is talking and the other one is listening. So of course, the second dummy head, that's where you would put your device. Uh, uh, but just for the listening examples, we made it so that one dummy head is talking second one is listening. All these recordings, what you are going to hear, they were done in semi-anechoic room. So when the one dummy head is talking and the other one is listening, uh, uh, this is how it sounds. So it's just a normal sound from mouth to ear. So here would be a male talker. The fruit of a fig tree is apple-shaped. And corresponding female. Four hours of steady work faced us. So, of course, we have a bit of reverberation in this room, but uh, uh, these are better examples if you listen to them with headphones. But let's now take another scenario. So now we are simulating a kitchen. So the, uh, uh, the um, impulse response was recorded in a kitchen, so we have more reverberation happening. So I, I first play the original and then with the reverberation. The fruit of a fig tree is apple shaped. The fruit of a fig tree is apple shaped. I don't know if you can hear because of the room, but there is a bit more. But if we go to more, let's say a bathroom. The fruit of a fig tree is apple shaped. There is much more. But this is not recorded in the bathroom. 
Just the impulse response was recorded there, and what you are hearing is the simulation. So this is how it sounds like in the test room where we are, uh, 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 where we are testing it. And the biggest one is staircase. So if I take female speaker original. Four hours of steady work faced us. Four hours of steady work faced us. You can hear the, it almost sounds like, uh, uh, it almost sounds like a church. This is a very big staircase at our, uh, at our office. But additionally, what we can do is we don't have to restrict ourselves to reverberation or background noise, we can also mix them. So here would be typical kitchen noises uh, with the reverberation. The fruit of a fig tree is apple-shaped. So you hear there's actually somebody cutting a carrot or something like that on the, uh, uh, on the case. And, and I think uh, in the uh, bathroom, I think that we can hear a shower. Four hours of steady work faced us. And on this case, uh, there is, if I recall correctly, there is a hair dryer going on. The fruit of a fig tree is apple tree. Okay. So all this, so we can do not only the reverberation, but we can also, so we can fold the speech with the reverberation, and additionally, we can add on uh, the background noise. So this is then the full simulation of the acoustic environment. So we get both the reverberation of the different rooms plus the different kinds of background noise scenarios. 네, 지금 들어보신 것처럼 그전에는 안 됐던 공간에 대한 그리고 주변 노이즈와 합쳐진 그런 잔향까지 같이 고려한 이런 테스트가 가능하게 되었습니다. so how the test setups typically look like is that for instance if we are testing a uh, a smart speaker, uh, very often we are using two dummy heads, so this is the side view, this is the top view, so that the two dummy heads are located like 120 degree difference, and we have the, the, the uh, smart speaker on a turntable, so we can turn, we can rotate the smart speaker on this, uh, uh, on this uh, uh, round table so that we can simulate the situation that the sound is coming from uh, uh, different directions. And then you put the whole setup, you put the two dummy heads, you put the rotating table inside your test chamber and you have the eight speakers uh, 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 dealing with the background noise and the reverberation. Device만 측정하다가 이제 주변 노이즈도 같이 측정하고 그다음 이제 잔향까지 고려해서 해치를 여러 개 써서 이제 측정할 수 있는 저런 시스템이 되었습니다. Okay, so now we have finished the background noise simulations. Now comes the question that wonderful we have background noise. What do we do with it? So I will now talk about the different methods how to test speech quality with background noise. Again, I will start from the old algorithms, so I will start from the uh, history, and I will walk you through what are the modern methods of testing uh, speech quality with background noise. So what I was t uh, telling in the, uh, uh, in the morning, PESC, Polka, Tosca, Equest, those are all done without any background noise. So now all the methods uh, that I'm uh, uh, presenting now, they are done with background noise. Um, just just uh, giving some, some, uh, 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 some examples here is that, for instance, if this one is the original speech, car noise. So this is background noise. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. And then you would uh, put a large the size in stockings is hard to on sell. top of it. This would be the summary. Just adding the, the two juice of lemons together. makes fine punch. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. 
Now, so that could be, for instance, the scenario inside a car cabin. You can hear the car driving, and the driver, passenger, they are talking. How could this then sound when it's transmitted through a uh, hands-free device? For instance, if the uh, microphones are not op uh, optimally placed, you might have a very bad signal-to-noise ratio. The juice of lemons makes a fine punch. Very quiet speech a large size in stockings is hard to when see. compared with the background noise. So that would be a typical example that you might have a directivity microphone, but it's pointing in the wrong direction. So you could easily have like a 20 dB drop in your signal-to-noise ratio uh, even when, uh, when you don't want it. Narrow band. The juice of lemons makes a fine punch. The large size in stockings is hard to sell. Again, the noise canceller is not working that much, and then even on top of that, you have the narrow band restriction. Of course, the narrow band uh, uh, transmission has cut very, uh, very much from the background noise, but uh, it has also cut something from the, uh, uh, from the speech. This one would be a typical example of uh, uh, when you have two speech codecs uh, uh, running at the same time. Because for instance, if you have, uh, uh, when you're using your hands-free device in your car, the connection between the hands-free device and your mobile phone is Bluetooth, and then you have the mobile phone network, and they are using different codecs. So there is transcoding happening uh, uh, over there, and this could be the result. So the uh, uh, transcoding has also affected the speech there uh, somewhat. And this is then what we are trying to target. The juice of lemons makes a fine punch. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. You can still hear the background noise, but the speech on top of it is very clear. You can hear the speech. The speech is not distorted. Uh, there is enough distance between the speech and, uh, and the background noise. So these were all examples from automotive hands-free. So just examples, what is happening there with different kinds of, of, of uh, uh, devices. 네, 차량의 이제 핸즈프리 시스티, 시, 아니, 시스템을 기준으로 봤는데요. 주변 노이즈 환경에 따라서 얼마나 스피치가 영향을 받는지 여러 가지 사례를 좀 보여드렸습니다. So, what kind of metrics are we using? There are what we call single value uh, metrics. Basically, these uh, metrics will give you a single dB value as a result. The typical uh, examples here are D value, ANR, meaning ambient noise rejection, and SNRI, signal to noise ratio. Uh, improvement. So that's what the I means, SNR, uh, SNR improvement. Then we have uh, methods where you have to interpret yourself. You are using an instrument to do the test, but to evaluate the result is still relying on the operator. So this is where you are looking at some, some curves and you are doing the pass-fail judgment uh, by yourself. And then, of course, there are also MOS-based metrics. And uh, uh, here we have the three quest, uh, both the narrowband wideband version and the super wideband uh, full band version. And there is a draft standard for listening efforts. So these different metrics I will now uh, 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 present to you. And this is basically the also the historical, uh, historical order for, uh, for these metrics. That D value and A and R are the oldest ones, and then three quest, and what you can see already there, if it's not, it's not yet a standard, it's a draft, so of course that one uh, uh, means that it's, uh, uh, the standardization process is ongoing, so uh, the listening effort will be the latest addition uh, uh, to uh, these algorithms.
네, 노이즈 제거는 그런 툴 평가 방법에 대해서 고전적으로 디벨류, ANR, SNRI가 있었고요. 그 다음에 백그라운드 주변의 특성이 얼마나 전송이 잘 되는지 캐릭터를 보는 BGNT 그리고 어, 음질까지 같이 고려하는 3캐스트가 있고요. 또 이제 곧 출시될 예정인데 리스닝 에포트라고 헤드 어커스틱에서 또 만드는 게 있습니다. 어, 얼마나 잘 들을 수 있는지 평가하는 툴을 또 만들고 있고요. So, first of all, D-value. Uh, honestly, I can't remember where the D comes from. I think it is simply means delta, uh, uh, just, just a difference. Uh, uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, much more meaning than that. Uh, what D-value is, it tells you how much more sensitive the device is to speech when compared to noise. So you basically do two tests. You do one test with noise, no speech, and you do a second test, speech, but no noise. And then you, then you compare the uh, sensitivity of the device, sensitivity towards speech minus sensitivity towards background noise. So basically you can say that if you have a 0 dB D value, it means speech and background noise are transmitted at the same level. The sensitivity of the device is the same. If you have a positive D value, then there is some noise, uh, uh, noise cancelling happening. The device is more sensitive to speech and if you have a negative D value, then something has gone really wrong because the uh, device is sending background noise with higher sensitivity than it's doing with, uh, uh, with speech. But basically what the, uh, 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 how it is calculated is that uh, we calculate the sensitivities, then we divide them into frequency bands, and there's a certain uh, weighting function that we use in when we are summing over the, uh, uh, over the frequencies. So the d-value is a sum or integral over frequencies, and different frequencies have different weighting factor. That's where, that's where you get from the uh, sensitivities, you then go down to one single, uh, one single number. And as I said, 0 dB d-value means that the sensitivity of speech is the same as sensitivity of background noise. Positive D value, speech is transmitted with higher sensitivity. Negative D value means that background noise is transmitted with a higher sensitivity. So the details, uh, how to measure is, you can find it in the ITU standard G, G111. But very important here, D-value is not a measurement of quality. It is just a decibel value integrated over time, integrated over frequencies, just telling you what is the difference in sensitivity, uh, uh, background noise versus speech. 네, 주변 노이즈가 얼마나 제거되어 전달되는지를 보는 그 방식이고요. 감도를 두개 측정합니다. 휴대폰에서 이제 노이즈만 전달해서 이제 얼마나 그 전달이 잘 되는지 하고 그 다음에 스피치를 전달했을 때 노이즈하고 스피치하고 따로 측정하는 거죠. 스피치가 얼마나 잘 전달되는지 그 감도를 비교하고요. 스피치 감도가 주변 노이즈 전달이 되는 것보다 커야 된다. 양수가 나와야 된다는 게이 알고리즘입니다. There is then the close relative to D value which is ANR, ambient noise rejection. The main difference between D value and ANR is the weighting function. You can see the formula looks slightly different. There is a, a, a strange uh, 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 correction factor there, but it's just that here you have the uh, weighting function just as a KI, whereas here the weighting function is, is a WJSI, and you just have to calculate 10 to the power of minus something 
times. It's just that the form of the weighting function is different. But you can think that this here is just a different kind of a weighting function. And there is a minus four, uh, four over five in the beginning of it. But you can also take that into the uh, uh, weighting function. So in that sense, the main difference between ambient noise rejection and D value is just uh, uh, in the weighting function how you do the summation. But otherwise, the measurement procedure and the interpretation is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, basically exactly the same. So there isn't that much difference between ANR and D value. The main difference is that D value comes from ITU, G111, and the uh, ANR comes from 3GPP. Some people say that two standardization organizations, each of them, they just wanted to have their own value, which is slightly different. Uh, uh, but the basic idea how you measure it is, is very much the same. It all just goes down into the weighting function, how you calculate, in detail, how you calculate the value. 네, 일단 스피치 감도가 주변 노이즈 전달 감도보다는 높아야 된다는 거고요. ANR하고 디밸류하고 측정하는 방법은 동일합니다. 단지 웨이팅하는 계산하는 방식이 좀 다르기 때문에 초기에는 두 개가 같이 있었습니다. 측정은 한번 하고 A, 어, 디밸류 계산하는 방법 또 ANR 계산하는 방법 두 가지의 툴이 있었습니다. So this picture actually really summarizes it that in both cases you take the sensitivity of the direct sound, so that's what the direct sound, uh, direct means there, sorry. And then you take the sensitivity of the diffuse, so this is the background noise. You subtract, uh, you subtract them from each other, so you will end up with the difference between the sensitivities. And then you have some weighting function, which is different between D value and A and R. And when you do the sum, you will then get the D value or ANR number. 네, 저런 알고리즘을 통해서 이제 계산하게 되고요. 네. Yeah. So, how do we do the measurement? Uh, uh, so, the setup is typically something like this. So, we have the background noise system. We have the dummy head, who is uh, 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 so that we can uh, have it talking. We have a microphone located. Uh, with a reference micro, uh, so we have a reference microphone, which is typically located close to the device microphone, and then of course we have the device under test that is connected to, for instance, radio communication tester, and then going into the uh, measurement system. So uh, we do basically, you could say that we do four measurements in total. First of all, the mouth is talking and we are recording with the reference microphone. So we get the reference for the speech. Then we have the background noise system going on, and again we are recording with the reference microphone. We get a baseline for the background noise. Then we do the measurement with the, uh, with the device under test. First, no noise, but the mouth is talking, and we are recording what the device under test is sending. And finally, the fourth test, mouth is not talking, but we have a noise simulation going on, and we are recording what the device under test is sending. And now, based on these four values, reference for, reference for noise, reference for speech, measurement of noise, so measurement through DUT for noise, measurement through DUT for the speech. From these four values, we first calculate the sensitivities, sensitivity towards speech, sensitivity towards background noise. We subtract, from, we subtract them from each other, and then with a certain weighting function, we, uh, 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 we squeeze them down to a single number, which then is, depending on the weighting function, either the D value or the ANR. 
측정하는 방식이 좀 특이한데요. 어, 오래전에 만든 알고리즘이기 때문에 예전에는 폰들이 되게 컸습니다. 마이크도 크고요. 어떻게 되냐면 주변 노이즈를 보통 핑크 노이즈를 플레이를 하고 센터 위치에서 해치 입 앞에 2.5cm MRP 포인트에서 이제 노이즈만 먼저 통과를 시킵니다. 그리고 레퍼런스 파일을 하나 가지고 있고요. 또 스피치가 말하는 거면 따로 또 이제 녹음해서 그 레퍼런스를 가지고 있습니다. 그 다음 이제 콜 걸린 상태에서 전화기 마이크로 스피치만 전달된 신호 그리고 다음에 이제 노이즈만 이제 플레이해서 노이즈만 전달된 신호를 가지고 그 감도를 이제 비교를 하게 됩니다. 그러니까 노이즈가 확실히 어 제거됐는지 확실히 알고 있는 노이즈를 이제 플레이해서 이제 측정하는 거, 방식입니다. So that's the D value and A and R. So uh, uh, the pros are here that it's well defined both in ITU and ETSI standards. It's a single value, it's a DB value, so it's easy to compare. And uh, if you are using a steady state background noise, it works also quite well. But the problem is uh, to test modern devices, it's not enough to have stationary background noise. You need to have realistic background noise, like cafeteria or roadside nodes or uh, noise from a train station. And there, the A and R and D value, the calculation methods are not working that well anymore. Because, they e uh, because, the, uh, because you're integrating over a longer period of time, uh, uh, so all these transients, that information basically disappears from your, uh, from your uh, result. And most importantly, A and R and D value they basically just tell you how many dBs is your noise canceller working. But they don't tell anything about the quality. The speech could be really badly distorted, but d, uh, d value and A and R, they're only interested about the level, basically. So even if there is a very, uh, very much distortion going on in, in the speech, you won't, you won't see that in uh, a &R or D value. So they are very simple test methods and that's why for instance the a &R is no longer valid. So 3GPP has basically stopped using it. It has, uh, 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 it's no longer in the newer version of the standard. So uh, uh, a &R, you can basically say that nowadays with modern devices a and R is an outdated test method. I think it's still important to know how it works, uh, to, uh, to have an idea what is the first approach of how to measure uh, the uh, uh, noise cancellation. But like I said, with modern devices, uh, it really doesn't provide any, uh, any reliable results. All, all modern devices, even if they have, a, with modern standards, crappy, noise canceller, you will still get good A and R and D value, uh, uh, values out from them. 네, 장점은 어, 규역으로 돼 있었고요. 그리고 이제 노이즈가 얼마나 어, 안정적인 노이즈, 완전 노이즈로 인식할 수 있는 환경에서는 그 동작하는 상태를 볼수 있었기 때문에 좀 편했고요. 그리고 수치로 나오기 때문에, 숫자로 나오기 때문에 딱 보기가 편, 편했습니다. 하지만 음질을 고려하지는 않았고요. 그리고 주변 노이즈가 어, 갑자기 없어진다거나 하는 그런 노이즈의 전송에 대한 그 특성은 너무 배제가 되어 있어 가지고 어, 좋은 알고리즘은 아니요 지금은 어, 삭제가 되었습니다. 네. So I have here a couple of examples. So here we have a, a, a d value of one. Very difficult to understand. Uh, because the, the uh, noise canceller uh, has difficult time of separating the noise and speech. So the, the uh, noise canceller is basically attacking both noise and speech. So both are transmitted more or, le more or less at the same, same level, uh, but the speech is very much chopped and, and uh, uh, not at all well transmitted. Here we have a D value of almost 20 dB. Stray cat gave birth to kids. The pirate just needs to 
So the no you can hear the noise is much lower than so the speech comes through with much higher level than the noise, but the speech is already again quite badly chopped and distorted. So you have a very, very good D value, but like I said, D value is just basically a comparison between two dB values. It doesn't tell you anything about the actual quality. Noise is low, speech is low. Low 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 is low. Uh, so the next one is signal to noise ratio improvement. First of all, where it's coming from, it comes from ITU G160 Appendix 2. And the idea here is that, like the name says, signal to noise ratio improvement. So we, the idea behind this measurement is that we look the SNR before the noise canceller and SNR after the noise canceller. So the idea is to see how much improvement does the noise canceller bring into the signal to noise ratio. That's the, uh, uh, in a uh, simple way put, what is SNRI? Signal to noise ratio improvement. So you can see here the SNR out, which is the process signal, minus SNR the biggest problem in SNRI is that it has originally designed for electrical, for network noise cancelers. And when you are doing measurements in a digital network, you can do well synchronized measurements. You can basically do a bit accurate recording. So when you go to acoustical domain, uh, the SNRI algorithm is sometimes, you could call it hypersensitive. You have a very small difference between two devices, but the SNRI scores could be very much different. So sometimes in acoustical case, the SNRI is reacting too much. When you're listening to the signal, there is just a very small difference but when you're calculating the SNRI, you might have several dB uh, 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 difference in the, uh, in the results. This is simply the result from the fact that SNRI was originally made for electrical case, for network noise cancelers. And then somebody got the idea, well, if it works for network, it should work for terminals. Uh, and and uh, it does have a, a bit of restrictions in the acoustical dome. 네, 그전에는 노이즈하고 스피치를 따로 측정했다면 이제 지금부터는 이제 같이 함께 측정을 하게 되는데 노이즈 제거 기술이 얼마나 동작하는지 그거를 이제 전기 단에 먼저 고려된 게 어, 네트워크 망 통해서 전달된 그 네트워크 일렉트릭을 이제 먼저 나오게 되었고요. 그다음에 어쿠스틱으로 이제 적용을 좀 하게 됐는데 완벽하게 일치하지는 않습니다. 네. Uh, so when you are measuring the SNRI Typically, you get four values out from the algorithm. So the G160 Amendment 2 defines four metrics. The, uh, the main metric is the SNRI, signal-to-noise ratio improvement. So this is basically the difference between SNR before noise canceller and SNR after noise canceller. So, uh, uh, over a longer period of time, so when you have speech and background noise. Then you have the value called total noise level reduction, and the TNLR is ignoring speech. So this is looking into the silence between sentences and pauses between words. So the SNRI is calculated from where you have speech, and background noise, so where we have speech and pauses. So the SNRI is calculated from the total area uh, or total time of your recording. The TNLR is ignoring the speech. When you have a long pause, 
between sentences, like there, between my sentences, and also the shorter pauses between words. Because when you are talking, you have a small pause between words. So TNLR is only calculated during those periods. Then you have the NPLR, noise power level reduction. This one is only looking at the short pauses between the words. So NPLR ignores the long pauses between sentences. And it only looks in, uh, inside a sentence between words, the, uh, uh, those short pauses. So TNLR and MPLR, basically the same thing, but TNLR includes long pauses between uh, sentences. NPLR only takes into account the short pauses between words. And the final one, which is the, uh, called DSN, uh, is just the SNRI and NPLR. So SNRI and NPLR, the difference between there. And the target is to have zero DSN. Uh, because if you, have a, a, if you have a negative DSN, then the speech is attenuated. Or if you have a positive DSN, the speech is amplified. Uh, but the target is that you should have relatively close to zero DSN. So like I said, when you calculate the G160 according to, uh, or sorry, when you calculate the SNRI according to G160, you have the main parameter SNRI, and then you have the three sub-parameters, TNLR, total noise level reduction, NPLR, noise power level reduction, and then you have finally the DSN, which is just SNRI, minus NPLR, which makes it easier to look at the balance in your noise canceller, because the DSN should be close to zero. SNRI 저평가를 이제 노이즈 제거 기술이 어, 적용되기 전하고 후하고 두 개의 결과를 비교해서 이제 4dB 이상의 개선비가 있으면 되고요. 어, 분석하는 구간에 따라서 긴 시간에 신호를 보내주고 짧은 시간 이제 말을 안 했을 때 그때 구간하는 에너지와 또 짧은 단어 사이에 이제 그 에너지의 파워를 구해서 이제 각각 저런 TNLR, 그다음에 NPLR 이렇게 여러 가지 방법으로 어, 계산하게 되었습니다. As I mentioned, the SNRI originally comes from the uh, network noise cancelers. So how do we then measure the acoustic test case? So I'll jump a bit forward, I want to show you the, 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 uh, 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 the picture here. So you see that the setup is very much the same as for ANR or for D value. So we have the background noise going on and we are putting the signal to the dummy head mouth and we are recording what, is, uh, what the device under test is sending in the uh, uh, network simulator and we're recording it from there. I have here two reference microphones. It doesn't mean that you do, uh, that you need two reference microphones. It just points out that where do you put your reference microphone is already a variable. Because some people put the reference microphone to so-called MRP, which means two and a half centimeters in front of the mouth, mouth reference point. That is one place where you, put, where you can put your reference microphone. Some people prefer to put the reference microphone close to the device microphone. So that already cr can create a big difference in your results. Because the standard doesn't clearly define where do you put your uh, uh, reference microphone. So you can choose between mouth reference point, two and a half centimeters in front of the mouth, or you put the reference microphone close to the device microphone. The question, of course, is how close is close? Because again, uh, 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 if, if there is variation there, you will have variation in your result. 
So that's already like one variable that comes in when you are measuring the SNRI. 네, 정기적으로 만들어진 알고리즘이기 때문에 저렇게 측정할 때 문서적으로 정확한 위치가 어, 명시되어 있지 않습니다. 레퍼런스 마이크를 통해서 이제 녹음해야 되는데 보통 사업자에서 이제 MIP 포인트 입수 입수해서 이제 2.5cm 위치에 거치를 하기도 하고요. 아니면 DOT 마이크 옆에 놓고 측정하는 저는 가이드 어, 내용이 없기 때문에 그런 사업자 따라서 이제 적용을 하셔야 되고요. 단지 좀 폴이 작은 경우는 이제 입에서 멀어지기 때문에 그때는 좀 결과가 안 좋게 나오겠죠. 네. And then uh, further because uh, as I said the SNRI is the difference between SNR before and after uh, before the noise canceller and after it. So there are basically three methods in detail how you can measure it. Uh, the definitely the most reliable way of so I jump back one slide. Uh, so the most reliable way of measuring the SNRI is turn off the noise reduction. So if you have access to the device, if you can modify the signal processing in the uh, in the telephone. Turn off the noise reduction, run one test, turn on the noise reduction, run a second test, and you can calculate the SNRI from the difference. Of course, this approach is available only for developers. If you're doing benchmarking, if you're comparing your product with or your algorithm with competitors, you might not have the choice to turn off and on the noise reduction. Also, what you have to be very careful is when you turn off the noise reduction, you're not allowed to change any gains in your system. It could very easily happen that when you switch off the noise reduction, your overall gain in the signal chain changes. And that change will immediately affect your SNRI score. So, Turning off and on the noise reduction is a very good method of doing the test. But, for instance, if we are talking about like a mobile phone or, or any other device, it's only available for the developers. If you're doing benchmarking, if you're doing comparison, this method basically, there is no way of using it. You can't, when you have a mobile phone you have bought from a, uh, bought from a shop or you have borrowed from somewhere, there is no way you can change the uh, noise reduction on and on, on and off on that device. And especially if you want to have a comparable results between your device and competitor's device, you have to choose the same test method. You can't measure your device, NR on and off, and competitor's device with some other alternative. When you are comparing, you have to compare with same similar test method. 네, 정확한 측정을 위해서는 이제 디바이스에서 노이즈 리덕션 기능을 이제 오프하고 한번 측정을 하고 그다음에 온하고 한번 측정해서 두 개를 비교를 해야 되는데 실제적으로 사업자에서 그 기능을 하기는 힘듭니다. 개발자님들은 쉽겠지만 어, 그래서 이제 측정하는 방법이 노이즈 리덕션 오프한 기능을 그냥 코에 걸린 상태에서 이제 디바이스를 통해서 마이크로 스피치를 전달해서 이제 그 특성을 구하게 됩니다. 그리고 레퍼런스 마이크에도 어, 레퍼런스 신호 자체도 이제 코 장비를 거쳤을 때그 기능 플랫한 그 특성을 어, 거려, 거쳐서 이제 되게끔 그런 파일을 하나 만들게 되고요. 그래서 그 차선의 방법으로 두 번째 방법으로 이제 측정을 하게 됩니다. So the second way how you can measure this is that for the unprocessed signal, okay, you say that you have a phone, there is no way to change the noise reduction off. So you need a way to get the unprocessed signal. What you do is, first, you measure the sending frequency response of the phone. Just, just speech, no background noise. Just measure the sending frequency response of the phone. Then you have your reference microphone. You have background noise and speech that you record with the reference microphone. And then you apply the telephone's 
frequency response to that signal. So you filter, so you take the speech and background noise with the reference microphone, but you add the telephone's individual frequency response on top of that. And you declare that that is the unprocessed signal. That would be the signal from the phone if you had the chance to turn off the noise reduction. And then the process signal is simply speech and background noise from the phone uh, through, the, uh, through the noise reduction. There is a related test method in which case you don't use the telephone's individual frequency response, but you take a generic, a typical frequency response, uh, uh, which is typically, uh, uh, we use the so-called MSIN filter. This is a filter defined by 3GPP, and which is used often in, in uh, when you are doing network planning. If you don't know what the frequency response of a phone is, you take the MSIN filter and you say, well, typically the frequency response of the phone is something like that. So these are the two other methods how you can measure the SNRI. And of these, of course, the individual frequency response is the preferred one because it's more, then you know it's, uh, it's the frequency response of exactly that telephone. Of course, it's more work. So if you need to do benchmarking of lots of telephones, you might choose the MSIN filter because uh, uh, you don't have to measure the frequency response of every telephone individual. 네, 저렇게 다양한 방법으로 측정이 가능한데요. 휴대폰에 갖고 있는 그 네트워크 특성을 고려해서 이제 필터를 고려해서 이제 사용할 수도 있고요. 어, 이 부분은 실제적으로는 그 NIC를 오프하고 그다음에 온하고 이렇게 따로 측정하는 게 가장 좋은 방법입니다. 하지만 실제적으로 힘들기 때문에 저렇게 샌딩 특성을 먼저 임의적으로 구해가지고 어, 저희가 그 부분을 어커스틱에 적용해서 이제 계산하게 됩니다. So uh, when I mentioned that when you are, uh, for instance, when you are doing benchmarking, this picture just reminds you that it, it doesn't necessarily depend uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the method, measurement method, what results you get, but it might have a big, uh, a big effect. Like for instance, here in the lower, so these are results from a one single telephone, so you can see that the second telephone, it doesn't matter. So this is noise reduction on off. This is the individual filter, and this is the MSIN filter. You can see that the results, SNRI, TNLR, NPLR, and DSN, they're very much the same. There is not a big deviation uh, uh, there at all. But here on the second terminal, you can see that the SNRI is pretty much the same for all measurement methods, but the DSN minus two, minus six, minus nine. There's a huge difference in, uh, in the DSN depending on what measurement method you take. So this is something that you can never predict. Only if you measure the same phone with three measurement methods, you can see what is the behavior. So if you are benchmarking, if you are comparing devices, it is very important that you stick to one measurement method. Noise reduction on off, individual frequency response, or MSIN filter. So you need to choose one measurement method and test all devices by using that if you want to have comparable results. 네, 저렇게 네로밴드하고 와이드밴드 필터까지는 적용이 되는데 어, 음성적인 그 어커스틱의 성분 자체가 그 밴드 이외의 그 어, 성분도 있기 때문에 좀 정확한 측정은 되지 않고요. 또 음성 음질에 대해서는 또 평가할 수 없기 때문에 어, 그 부분은 좀 고려를 하셔야 됩니다. So these are the single value parameters, and I'll move on then to MOS, so mean opinion score. 
The first metric I want to present is the three quest, which stands for threefold quality evaluation of speech in telecommunications. So this is an algorithm that originally was developed by head acoustics, so by us, uh, but there is a slightly modified version of it by 3GPP where we got bigger test databases from other companies. Uh, uh, so uh, I can't anymore say that uh, 3Quest is purely coming from Head Acoustics uh, because it has been a cooperation between uh, Head Acoustics and several other companies. Uh, but it is standardized by uh, 3GPP. And where the 3 comes in the name, why do we call it threefold quality evaluation? Answer is simply, when you run the test, you get three MOS scores from there. You get MOS score for speech, you get MOS score for noise, and you get MOS score for the total. So these are what we call speech MOS, SMOS, noise MOS, NMOS, and the overall quality, GMOS, so the G stands for general. Uh, uh, so speech, noise, and general. 네, 그래서 이제 주변 노이즈가 있는 상태에서 음질까지 같이 고려해서 이제 만든 알고리즘이 3 캐스트가 되겠고요. 어, 네로 밴드, 와이드 밴드, 그리고 슈퍼 와이드 밴드까지 2017년도에 이제 같이 만들어졌습니다. 어, 그리고 스피치에 대한 점수 SMOS와 그 다음에 노이즈에 대한 점수 MMOS. 그 다음에 전체 평균 내 가지고 지모스라고 해서 이제 세 가지 모스 값을 이제 산출하게 되고요. 모스 값이기 때문에 1에서 5까지 네, 평가를 하게 됩니다. Uh, so in a bit more detail the SMOS, NMOS and GMOS. So SMOS is we are looking the signal to noise ratio between the speech and process signal. Uh, we are looking into if there is any modulation uh, uh, in the speech. Uh, it looks into the naturalness, how original the speech uh, 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 looks like. And the ESMOS is very closely uh, correlated to any degradation in the speech area alone. The ENMOS is mainly looking at the level of the background noise, how loud it is, but also if there is any modulation happening in the background noise. So the NMOS, NMOS is basically the question, uh, answer to the question, how intrusive is the background noise? Five, you can't hear any background noise. Four means you can hear background noise, but it's not disturbing in any, any way. And then three, two, one, a bit disturbing, disturbing, a lot disturbing. And the GMOS is a combination of SMOS and NMOS. And it is the overall uh, quality, including both speech and noise. So when we calculate these values, actually NMOS is calculated first because SMOS is taking NMOS as one input parameter. There's, there's a certain feedback loop in the human brain why we need to do this. But the GMOS is simply a, uh, 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 it's not a sum or average, it's a bit more complicated uh, uh, summation of SMOS and NMOS, but it's just a polynomial. It's a, uh, it's a certain second degree polynomial, uh, how it is calculated from SMOS and NMOS. So like I said, when we calculate them, NMOS is calculated first, then SMOS, and then combining these two, get two together, we get the GMOS value. 네, 세 가지 파라미터가 있는데요. 스피치에 대한 점수를 매기게 되고요. 어, 스피치에 대한 점수는 엠모스, 노이즈에 대한 점수에 따라서 이제 영향을 받게 됩니다. 주변 노이즈가 얼마나 큰지 작은지에 따라서 이제 스피치에 대한 기대감이 좀 다르기 때문에 그런 가중치를 더, 줘서 이제 엠모스를 먼저 계산하고 그 다음에 에스모스를 어, 계산한다는 얘기입니다. 지모스는 전체적인 점수를 볼수 있게 1에서 5까지 어, 총체적인 점수라고 보시면 됩니다. 보통 사업자에서는 에스모스나 엠모스 두 가지만 uh, so the standards that we have is that the original three quest was 
introduced in 2007, and it was, here is a point for confusion, please be careful, 202396 part 3 defines the original three quest. The part 1 is the background noise simulation system. So it's one and same standard, but you have three parts in it. Part 1 is the background noise simulation system, part 2 is the background noise database, and part 3 is the original 3Quest algorithm. Then 3GPP uh, adopted five years later with more work, there is a new standard 103-106. So this is the uh, uh, Etsy and 3GPP standard 103-106. And then the super wideband and full band version was again five years later. So the, uh, actually, I didn't notice that there is a uh, original is 2007. Then five years, we have the modified three quest algorithm. And five more years, there is the uh, super wideband and full band version, which is then the 103 281. So these two are the uh, al uh, standard versions or the algorithm versions that are currently in use. 네, 처음에 2007년도에 이제 처음 저 알고리즘에 어, 만들게 되었고요. 2012년도에는 이제 더 많은 협력 업체들과 함께 어, 국제 규격으로 스탠다드로 이제 만들기 위해서 이제 더 많은 샘플링과 그 작업을 통해서 만들게 되었습니다. 그리고 최근에는 이제 슈퍼 와이드 밴드하고 풀 밴드를 이제 커버할 수 있는 새로운 알고리즘을 또 개발해서 어, 이전과는 좀 다른 방법으로 이제 평가하는 툴을 만들었습니다. So if we look uh, again a bit of the uh, uh, how does the algorithm look like uh, for three quest in narrow band and wide band, we actually have three input signals going into the algorithm. The first signal that we have, which is marked with the letter C, it is the clean speech. It means the original speech file that is being used in the testing. So that is known as clean signal, denoted by C. Then we have the U, which stands for unprocessed signal. So this is the when the dummy head is talking and we have background noise going on, we have a reference microphone that is recording the speech and background noise. This is the unprocessed signal. So this is uh, the speech and background noise, but there is no noise cancelling algorithm working on it yet. And then finally, we have the signal P, which stands for processed. And this is the signal that we are recording from the device. So we are recording typically uh, from the uh, radio network simulator. So the uplink signal that is coming from the device. So basically comparing the unprocessed and processed and clean and processed. So basically like two branches that are running, uh, running through there. So we are comparing processed and unprocessed and we are comparing clean and processed. And from these, we finally end up having the NMOS value, the noise MOS. 네, 측정하는 시료에 어, 마이크로 전달되는 신호를 가지고 이제 분석하게 되는데요. 어, 분석하기 위해서 이제 레퍼런스 신호가 필요하게 되고요. 측정하는 디바이스 근처에 보통 3cm 이내에 레퍼런스 마이크로폰을 놓고 노, 어, 주변 노이즈하고 스피치, 어, 해치가 말하는 그 스피치 음성을 같이 녹음하게 됩니다. 그거를 하나의 기준으로 삼게 되고요. 또 해치가 말하는 그 원음에 대한 그 정보를 가지고 있기 때문에 그 클린 스피치를 가지고 저런 알고리즘을 거쳐서 이제 MOS, SMOS, GMOS를 이제 평가하게 됩니다. So as I said, we first calculate the NMOS because the NMOS is used, if I see it somewhere, uh, good question. New version. New. Yeah, uh, no, uh, I'm just looking uh, because the the uh, uh, SMOS come uh, uh, the NMOS comes in here into these algorithms again. 
for calculating the SMOS, we again have the same three signals. We have the clean speech, we have the unprocessed, and we have the uh, uh, processed signal. So uh, uh, again, comparison from these yields the SMOS. Where we need the SMOS, uh, sorry, where we need the NMOS in this calculation is that there is a certain expectation happening in a human mind. If you hear a signal where there is very little noise, so if you hear a signal with a high NMOS value, you have a high expectation about the speech quality. So basically, we are using the NMOS as a switch between expectations. So uh, if you hear a lot of background noise, you don't expect the speech quality to be, to be that good either. So it's very, uh, so if you have a lot of noise, it's easier to get a bit better SMOS value. But if there is no noise included, you have a higher expectation, you're more critical about the speech quality. So uh, uh, that's why if you have a high NMOS value, it's more difficult to have also high NMOS value. It's simply because of the, even if you're only trying to concentrate on the speech, there is something in the back of your head. There is something unconscious happening that you can't, uh, uh, it's something that you can't affect. It's simply, if you can't hear any noise in the signal, you somehow expect the speech quality to be good. And what can easily happen is that the speech could be distorted because of the noise canceller. The noise canceller has pushed down the, uh, the uh, noise level, but it has also distorted the speech. So what happens is you hear a signal with very little noise, so you have a high expectation of the speech quality, and then you hear this distorted speech and you're uh, uh, you're unhappy about it and you give a bad score to it. So that's why the NMOS is also coming in into the calculation of the SMOS. NMOS is a very important thing. The first time the NMOS was made in the first time, it was made in the first time, and then it was made in the first time, and then it was made in the first time. The NMOS was made in the first time, and then it was made in the first time. So, uh, as I said, the GMOS is just calculated as a quadratic function from the SMOS and NMOS. Uh, so, it's a, a relatively simple mapping, uh, but it provides very, uh, 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 very high correlation with the original uh, listening tests. So, this is the narrow band and wide band version of the three quests. So, the measurement set up once more. We have background noise going on. We have a reference microphone close to the device microphone. And we are putting the signal to the mouth. This signal here is the clean speech. When we are recording the speech and background noise with the reference microphone, this is the unprocessed signal. And finally, what the device is sending is the process signal. So from these three signals, clean speech, unprocessed, and processed, we are calculating the S, N, and GMOS in the narrow band and wide band test cases. 네, 측정을 위해서 이제 측정하는 시료 마이크 옆에 레퍼런스 마이크를 놓고요. 통화가 걸린 상태에서 이제 어, 프로세스 거친 신호, 휴대폰 마이크로 전달된 신호하고 레퍼런스 마이크로 전달된 신호. 그리고 클린 스피치 원래 해치가 말하려고 하던 그 음성을 가지고 어, 평가를 하게 됩니다. 그래서 이제, 어, 구성처럼 저렇게 시, 특정하는 시료 마이크 옆에다가 3cm 이내 근처에다 마이, 레퍼런스 마이크로폰을 어, 놓고 측정하시면 됩니다. Uh, so I have a couple of uh, couple of examples. This is the original speech, for instance. The stems of the tall glasses cracked and broke. The wall phone rang loud and often. Here we would have the speech is okay, 
but the background noise is coming through a bit loud. The shelves were bare of both jam or crackers. A joy to every child is the swan boat. Here the speech quality is bad, noise, uh, uh, noise reduction is working very, uh, uh, very actively. He could not remember his name. I never can leave you to the land. You can, there's almost no background noise there, but the speech is very chopped. Uh, uh, that's, why the, uh, that's why the Enmos is, is, it's relatively high, almost four, but the Esmos is, is only uh, uh, 2.1. This is an average. Uh, uh, average device, slightly below average uh, 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 in all respect. The speech is a bit quiet, uh, uh, but if you listen to it, it's uh, it's actually not that bad quality in general. And then, uh, really honestly, these are all actual examples. Uh, uh, so, if I recall correctly, this one is. Uh, so uh, uh, that one is just a bad, uh, uh, bad case in 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 uh, uh, in general. Um, I think that I'll go until end of the uh, MOS, uh, so uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, this is just uh, highlighting the uh, uh, what the three quest is. Is so we have here the green signal is the original signal. This is the thing that is coming from the dummy head mouth. And here you can see very clearly the effect of the noise canceller. So the red signal is speech and background noise recorded with the, uh, with the reference microphone. And you can see in the red signal it is very difficult to notice where the speech is because the background noise is so loud that the background noise is almost completely overwhelming the signal. But the black one on top of it, this is the speech and background noise, but noise canceller has been working with it. So you can very clearly separate the speech sequences. So the speech is very clearly visible. There is some background noise remaining but it's a huge difference between the unprocessed red signal and the processed black signal. There you can really see uh, uh, what the noise cancellers are capable of doing, how much they can reduce the noise from the signal, but still keep the speech available. 네, 보시는 것처럼 어, 레퍼런스 마이크로 주변 노이즈하고 스피치를 같이 측정했을 때, 저 빨간 결과가 되는 거고요. 어, 폰 마이크, 시료 마이크로 이제 전달된 신호가 저 검은색으로 보이는 부분, 겹치는 부분이 됩니다. 위에 토로소가 말하는 스피치 구간하고 같이 타임넷, 타임을 비교해 보시면 토로소가 말하지 않는 구간, 어, 어, 샌딩으로 말하지 않는 구간에 노이즈가 없어지는 걸볼 수가 있고요. 네, 이렇게 결과를 통해서 어, 어떻게 결, 노이즈가 제거됐는지 어, 분석할 수도 있습니다. So, uh, then the uh, last bit about the MOS algorithm, sorry, this part differs somewhat from your script uh, uh, because I got some input from my colleague in a very late stage, so uh, the, uh, the slides here are a bit different from the, uh, from the, uh, from the material. Uh, but first of all, this 103.281, the super wideband, full band uh, uh, version of the request, one big difference is that we don't need the unprocessed reference anymore. So the uh, three quest super wideband full band or TS103281 model A, whichever you want to call it, it works with the clean speech and process signal. It doesn't need the uh, reference microphone anymore which means that it is easier to measure, it's less hassle in the measurement chamber, but also it provides more reproducible results.
because every time when you are positioning the reference microphone, there's always some freedom where you put it, and that one will make your uh, three quest values vary in a certain range, especially between labs. But with the, uh, with the three quest super wide band, full band, because there is no reference microphone anymore, that source of uncertainty is completely gone. Uh, in the uh, three quest narrow band full band, uh, sorry, uh, three quest narrow band wide band, we were using uh, uh, neural networks uh, a bit in the uh, in the training process, uh, but here in the three quest super wide band full band, we are using more advanced machine learning, namely random random forest regression. So uh, these have been taught by using a certain amount of uh, what you would call machine learning uh, uh, techniques. The training databases for the super wide band, full band are much larger than for, uh, for the narrow band, uh, wide band, and this also makes the algorithm more stable so that it can uh, cope with different kinds of devices. The super wide band and full band are in the three cast algorithm to get on the case and argue so, zero on bang bob in the channel and get a quill. 한번 녹음을 하, 녹음을 하고 이제 스피치 구간에 대한 스피치 레벨에 그 레벨을 따로 구하고 또 말을 안 했을 때 노이즈가 얼마나 제거됐는지 그런 부분 부분을 이제 계산해서 이제 레퍼런스 마이크 없이 이제 한 번에 이제 측정할 수 있게끔 이제 만들었습니다. 기존과는 방법이 아예 달라진 거죠. So this picture just highlights the fact that when you are measuring the three quest super wide band full band you don't need the reference microphone anymore. You just have the terminal at the dummy head. The dummy head is talking. You are record, and of course you have the background noise going on. You're recording what is coming from the device. And from there alone, the algorithm is capable of calculating the S, N, and G MOS. Uh, furthermore, there is the G MOS is calculated, uh, the text, uh, so when you take this slide, what's new with TS-103-281, you can find this text there as the last, uh, uh, last set there. So big difference is how the GMOS is calculated. It is no longer just a second order polynomial from the SMOS and NMOS, but there are actually three inputs going, again, into a random forest regressor, so machine learning. There is the SMOS, NMOS, and then there is a correlation between the uh, clean speech and the, uh, uh, and the processed signal. So there is an extra correlation between the signals, what is fed into the uh, calculation algorithm, to calculate the GMOS. So the, uh, the GMOS, what you get from the three quest super wide band, full band, is uh, um, it's capable of handling much wider variety of devices than what the uh, three quest narrow band, full band can do. So you get more reliable results. There are less outliers happening. Yeah. 어, 간단히 보긴 좋은데 SMOS하고 MMOS의 그 수치만 가지고 어, 평가할 수 있기 때문에 어, 그 부분을 좀더 중점적으로 보시면 될것 같습니다. Uh, so just showing you uh, a bit of comparison. So we have uh, uh, the upper row are handset measurements, uh, and we have here SMOS and NMOS. So this is device number one or actually device number 11, 17, 18. This is just different mobile phones what we have measured. Uh, uh, so uh, these are measured in the handset mode, meaning we have used the uh, 202396, so the diffuse noise simulation, but uh, three quest super wideband. So you can see that there is a bit of variation. So the different colors are different rooms. We tested these in three different labs. So you can see that there is a bit of variation between the labs, but this is mainly because of the background noise simulation, because it is the diffuse noise simulation where you need to do manual adjustment.
But when we look at the, uh, 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 which are measured with, uh, so this is hands-free me measurement, meaning the phone is mounted 30 centimeters in front of the hats. Here we are using the three pass, which is the fully automatic, uh, 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 the eight, eight speakers and eight microphone equalization. So you can see how much more reliable the results have become. Uh, so the variation what you have between the rooms almost completely disappears. And this is mainly because of the background noise simulation, because there is no manual equalization done. It's completely automatic, so it doesn't matter in which room, in which lab you do the measurement, you get very reliable, very repeatable uh, 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 results by using the three pass and the, uh, and the uh, three quest super wide band, full band. Yeah. 이제 스피커 여덟 개를 통한 그 방식을 통한 그 레퍼런스 재현성을 한번 이렇게 어, 결과를 만들어 봤습니다. Uh, then one final uh, 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 two, uh, slides before uh, before the uh, 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 coffee break. Uh, the ways how can you use three quest to compare between mobile phones? This is one measurement method that, for instance, our consulting department very, very often uses. We choose four background noises. Uh, I must apologize slightly for the pictures because the pictures are coming from our head of consulting and he can't take anything seriously. So that is why we have the discotheque under the cafeteria mm -hmm. and this is his interpretation of a car but uh, 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 they're just to resemble. So idea is we take four different noises. We take cafeteria, car, train station, and road. Road means close to an intersection. And then we measure the three quest, narrow band, wide band, super wide band, and we plot the S, N, and G MOS for each device in what is known as uh, ITU P505 quality pie. The idea is that you pick like a certain number of parameters which you plot out as a uh, pie diagram. And this way you can very easily do comparison between devices. So always three slices per each noise. So we have the cafeteria, car, train station, and crossing, road crossing, and we can see the performance of the different mobile phones here. You can see, of course, the more green you see, the better the result is. So this is also very, uh, I sometimes call this management way, uh, uh, management friendly way of representing data, because it's easy to say the more green, the better the result. But you can also see that, uh, for instance, this telephone here is simply bad all over. These two, you can see that the more difficult the background noise is, the performance goes down. Here more than here. This particular phone shows what we in Europe, what we would call a Asian tuning for a noise canceller. Because different countries different cultures have different preferences. And noise cancellation is actually one parameter where you have big cultural differences between Asia and Europe, US. In Europe and US, we prefer to have balanced noise canceller. A bit of noise, okay, but the speech quality has to be good. In many Asian cultures, it is common that you want to press the noise down. If the speech gets distorted a bit, it's still acceptable. So we have here, you can see, S, N, G, especially with the car noise. S and G MOS are down, but the N MOS, so you can see almost this, it's like a propeller. So you have always these four sections which are pointing out 
in the uh, 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 in this pie chart. So this is this could be your target. It doesn't mean that it's a bad tuning. Uh, uh, it just means that this mobile phone or hands-free device, if I would see this result, for instance, if this would, was a result from a car, for a car uh, from a car hands-free device, I would say, oh, that's tuned for the Asian market. And then I would say, oh, this one here, that's for the U uh, uh, US and European market. This is really something that uh, sometimes you have to take into account this cultural difference. For instance, for car manufacturers, for hands-free manufacturers, it's very typical to do two tunings or three tunings. There is always one tuning for Asia, and then there is one tuning for US and Europe. You might want to split US and Europe also into two, because there is one parameter which, differ, uh, which differs a lot uh, between Europe and uh, US, and that one is automatic gain control. Europeans don't, do not like gain control, Americans love it. So uh, there's also another parameter uh, where you have cultural differences. But this one here, just no, uh, noticing that the three quest can be very well used to compare between devices, but also worth reminding you that sometimes uh, uh, the standards might have, they are called international standards, but we have to sometimes recognize that they have a cultural bias. They are very often made by Europeans and Americans, and uh, they might not reflect every culture's uh, 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 typical uh, wanted behavior. So sometimes you might want to have this kind of behavior from, uh, from your device if it's intended for a certain market. And I think now is the time for a coffee pause.